Coming up, it's the second jewel in the Triple Tierra for three-year-old fillies looking back at the Bison City Showdown. We'll meet the five-year-old owner of a stakes horse, our weekly handicapping tips, and... I'm Maddie Jo Tilly. For a few hundred dollars and no strings attached, you could own a racehorse? Stick around. Yes, we're talking horses. Welcome to the program, Joe Tilly alongside Jason Portwando and Phillies took center stage last week, the second jewel of the Triple Tierra, the Bison City Stakes. Woodbine Oaks winner, Nishama looking for a third straight win, trying to become the first horse in nine years since Seeley Hill to actually win the Oaks and follow it up with a Bison City score. But you know, Karen was looking for revenge and she had that pace advantage going in. And Karen went in as a morning line favorite, despite yeah. the fact that Nishama won the Oaks. Yeah, a little odd there because Karen was 0 for the season. Nishama went in, in my opinion, as the hotter horse. All right, let's see what happened. Let's get the call now from track announcer Robert Geller. And Karen getting away from Nishama pretty easily at the moment. Oh, Karen, she's got her running shoes on at the top of the lane in the Bison City. And she looks like she might be long gone here. Karen's three in front. Nishama in second. Trini Brunette right down the outside. Karen with a big lead. And it's all about Karen here today. Nishama, Trini Brunette and Meadow Rose. And Karen going on. Nishama and Trini Brunette late. But Karen has been supreme. Here in the winner's circle with Mr. Campbell and Jesse's girl, I had to say it. Uh, congratulations, Karen, that was pretty easy. Oh, it's never easy, but yeah, we had things a little bit more our way today, and she's proved what kind of filly she is. She's just, a, she's just a tough horse with talent, and she goes a long ways. You know what, we've been saying it all week long, the filly deserves it, uh, you know, her 15 minutes of fame, because she had such a two-year-old campaign, tough one. And, uh, you know, she never misses races, she never misses work, she trains hard. Uh, She's a handful in the morning. The connections do a great job with her. She, she's really, she's like a different horse in the afternoon. She, she just seems to know her job. She either loves her job or she knows the difference. But uh, I've always said it, the good ones take a little different, and she does. Here with winning trainer Mike DiPaolo and winning owner Robert Marzilia. Mike, obviously it's good to see her get back in the wind circle. Yeah, we, uh, we had her heart broken a little in the Oaks. She was running so well and just kind of got to floundering a little in the last part, but she made up for it today and ran a big race. What was your thoughts that throughout the race got an easy lead and the fractions were in her favor? Yeah, the, the pace seemed to set up real well. She did something a little funny at the eighth pole. She likes to do <laughs> something down there. We're going to have to try to figure out what that is, but um, she showed her courage in her heart and got it done. Sixth lifetime win, no over a half million dollars in her career. Where does she go next, perhaps? Well, we'll take a look at the next leg. Um, you know, pace does make the race. She does like the grass, but we'll see. Wonder where, perhaps. Yeah, uh, good luck if you go there. Congratulations, Thank Mike you. Robert. Good Thanks. job, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Racing analyst Jen Morrison joining us on the program. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Safe to say she's back, Karen. <laughs> that was uh, pretty impressive last week. Yeah, that was a great race by Karen. She definitely is back. Last year, one of the top two-year-old fillies in Ontario. But some of her rivals from last year grew up, matured, yeah. got better. But she's sticking right with them now. It's her first win of the season. Jesse Campbell gets his second Bison City score a few years ago. Did it with original script. Uh, big effort in second, we should mention. Trini Brunette. Yeah, Derek Chin's filly, trained by Danny Vela. Had a bounce back effort in this race, closing very well. Nishama. Didn't really see any excuses, simply third best, I guess? Yeah, well, you know, uh, Nishama is not a big, robust filly. She ran a mm. huge race in the Oaks to get up and win over holding off Gamla Ghost and beating Karen. But today, the distance was shorter. She was a little bit more flat. There was not enough speed for her to run at. But she still tried. I mean, she was plugging along there. Congratulations to Karen. Uh, loves the synthetic, whether it be Tapita or Polytrack. Has never missed a ticket. Only bad race, we can say, came over the dirt at Gulfstream Park. Uh, so no Triple Tierra winner again yeah. this season and probably a lot of new fresh faces for the Wonderwear. Yeah, so the Wonderwear is a mile and a quarter, the longest race of the three, on the grass as well. Right. So I don't know if we'll see Karen in that race. That's a quite a long race for her. Nishama will probably see Trini Brunette, but certainly we'll see, uh, I think, a big field and lots of new faces. Yeah, Mike Doyle has a bunch of sophomore fillies. Maybe we'll throw Garibo Colleen into the mix. Eh? Yeah, that'll be your second race uh, off a little bit of a setback. So, yeah, for sure. Looking forward to that one. 
When we return on Talking Horses, we'll take a look ahead to this weekend's stakes action, previewing both the Ontario Matron and Victoria, jousting to the top two, and a new twist on the sport of kings. On the way out, here's a check on the rider standings. Horse people have a habit of taking care of their own. It's always been that way. The Horsemen's Benevolent and Protective Association of Ontario was formed to represent horse people's interests on a myriad of issues pertaining to the business of horse racing and the many tens of thousands of people whose livelihoods depend upon the sport. The betterment of racing at all levels is their goal. This is the HBPA's mission statement. We are committed to the future of horse racing we are horse people who have one horse and a dream. We are horse people who spend millions of dollars. We are horse people who race throughout the country. We are owners, breeders, and trainers, big and small, young and old, from one end of the province to the other. We horse people are the HBPA. We are horsemen helping horsemen. This is Sheena Ryan, and you're watching Talking Horses. Welcome back to the program. This is a huge weekend of stakes activity here at Woodbine. You've got the Ontario Damsel for three-year-old fillies. You've got the Ontario Matron Stakes, and of course, Victoria. Featuring the juveniles, uh, a race deep in history, Joe, dates all the way back to 1903. Of course, named after Queen Victoria herself, who passed away uh, two years earlier. A lot of past champions have turned out to be uh, some phenomenal horses after this win. I mean, the Arctic, a deputy minister taking us way back in the day. Last year's winner was Holloway Hideaway for a trainer Barb Mitchell. And of course, tomorrow, a brand new name on that trophy. And one of the contenders is Jurigen. This horse is co-owned by five-year-old Sarah Ladisser. Sarah, I hear you have a racehorse now. What's his name? Jurigen? Talk to, talk to Jennifer. Jurigen? Sturgeon, okay. And who do you own this horse with? My grandma. Ah, that's exciting. Are you looking forward to seeing your horse race again? Yeah. And what do you like best about Jurigen? Do you like feeding him carrots? Yeah. And what else does he eat? Horse food. Horse food? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's kind of a neat story. Uh, we had a two-year-old for a client years ago, I can't think of the year, uh, Copeland County for McCathens, Luke McCathen, uh, American Pharaoh fame. Um, and for some reason, my mom just kind of had an affinity for the filly. Uh, she ran, I want to say a couple of seconds here as a two-year-old, those early uh, sprint races, and she went to OBS and got sold. And then Ended up racing on the Eastern Circuit, Laurel, uh, Penn, those racetracks, and my mom just followed her career. My mom called me and had noticed that she'd ran a couple of poor races, and oh, my poor Copeland County. So uh, we'd retired one of our broodmares. Harold and I got talking, my dad a little bit, and we said, you know what? And at the time, Sarah had just been born. We. Of course, with this business, it's not easy to keep a business and, and raise kids. My mom had just retired. So we all got together and said, let's get mom, Copeland County, uh, bring her out, have her shipped up as a surprise, and that's a great way to keep a babysitter. So that was the plan. And here we are, what would that be? Almost, I guess it'd be five years later. Her first bull was a filly. Uh, we bred her back the following year to Giant Gizmo, and here we are, Jurigen. And uh, what is Jurigen? It's Japanese? It is. It's Japanese. I'm not sure how she picked it, how she picked the name. I do know that uh, it's a Japanese symbol of fortune and luck, so sounds good to me. <laughs> Jen rejoins us, and I'm not sure if they keep stats on youngest owners ever <laughs> to win a stakes event, but that would be a cool story. Yes, yeah, certainly would. Um, you know, you see a lot of these owners and trainers and 
they're bringing up their children around the racetrack. They get to know the horses, and why not? You know, we've seen some of these kids uh, have shares of partnerships and horses. So we'll cheer for Jurigen because Grandma bred the horse, and uh, Mummy and Daddy trained the horse. So. Uh, well, good luck to Sarah yeah. Lattiser. Anything's possible. The first year <laughs> students, they are like little kids, uh, exactly. ironically enough. So yeah. anything can happen and usually does. Also on tomorrow's card of action, uh, mile and a 16th, older ladies going post route in the grade three Ontario matron. Yep, so our older mares uh, starting to get in gear now. And one of the horses in the leading that category is Hot Kiss, trained by Mike DiPaolo, <laughs> who can do, no, yeah. Yeah, can do no wrong right now. But there's some challengers. And I talked to one of the trainers of a possible challenger, Malcolm Pierce, who has possibly Moon Rainbow for Samson Farms. Well, I think she's a little bit better on the turf, but the stakes on the turf are obviously very tough. It's a, a competitive division, so uh, but she's she's decent on the poly or on the tapita, so uh, I'd say she's halfway equal. Now she looks like a horse that is a bit keen early in her races. Is that fair to say? Very fair to say. She does want want to have a speed style, and that gets her beat sometimes, but. Uh, I mean, we're not going to change her, I don't think, at this stage. She's four years old and she's had some racing. I mean, if we can get a slow pace, uh, that sure helps us. Now, Jen, we should say Malcolm has won this race before. 2007, she's in the money, but that was for the Live Oak Plantation. So this would be his first for the Red and Gold Machine. Yeah, and Samson Farms, you know, not a large supply of horses these days, but they're always horses to be reckoned with. Again, Moon Rainbow, as he told us, a horse that sort of needs to be tinkered with in her style of running. So we'll see if they can get a stakes win out of her and up her potential as a broodmare. Should be another uh, competitive field. Not all that long from now. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but uh, <laughs> geez, just over a week. Step two, Triple Crown, Fort Erie, another wide open field likely. Yep, I think so. And of course, it's on the dirt. The Prince yes, of Wales exactly, in a mile yeah. and 316, mm -hmm. slightly shorter. So certainly a different situation. Queen's Plate winner Sir Dudley Diggs is going. He's run on dirt before and seems to handle it. Yeah. Uh, All on Red is a horse that's won on dirt, and uh, he's a horse to contend with. We have several horses. Leaving Malibu's going to the Prince of Wales. And I talked to a new shooter, a mm. new shooter. <laughs> and that's Negon's Edge trainer, Stu Simon, who trains a horse for Chiefs with Stables. Well, we had him in Florida this winter and the horse really thrived on the dirt and he was actually really unlucky not to win in Gulfstream when we ran him against a very good horse at Todd Pletcher's. We just really did get unlucky for him not to win. Then he just had a little setback and we just, he's a very nice horse and we just took our time getting back. We knew we weren't going to make the plate so we just got, and got a race underneath him with the Prince of Wales really as our target because the, he, the horse really does love the dirt so it would be very interesting. What did you think of the Queen's Plate field? Is this a reachable group for your horse? Well, I think they're, you know, they're a well, uh, well matched field and, and, you know, uh, at least four or five of them horses ran really well. But I, like I said, I think our horse is, is very good on the dirt. I have a lot of confidence in him and I think he'll, sh he'll show up big that day. I think it's going to be another wide open betting board. So perhaps a, a great race for a Jen's Gym. Well, I mean, you know, Amy's Gizmo second in the Queen's Plate. Right. And my Jen's Gems, the last four in a row have been second. So uh, I'm due to win. So we'll have to check out this week's Jen's Gems. Now it's time for Jen's Gems, our talking horses picks of the week. Time now for our news of the week, brought to you by Woodbine's HPI Bet. The numbers came in for the Queen's Plate and they were staggering. Over 37,000 fans showed up for Canada's biggest race day. That's the most ever for a plate that was not attended by the Queen. A record $11.8 million was wagered on plate day, including $3.4 million on the big race itself. And the television ratings were tremendous. 1.2 million unique viewers tuned in. That was triple the audience of last year. Down the yard is Sir Dudley Diggs. Sir Dudley Diggs, the threat. Amis Gizmo in front, but here comes Sir Dudley Diggs and Julian Leparu. Sir Dudley Diggs has hit the front, and Sir Dudley Diggs from Amis Gizmo. Sir Dudley Diggs has won the Queen's Plate. A spectacular effort by a fine filly in the Belmont Oaks Invitational. Catch a glimpse, Canada's reigning horse of the year, trained by Mark Cassie with Florent Giroux aboard. 
Catch a glimpse the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies Turf Champ took an early lead at Belmont and she would never give it up, holding off a late challenge from time and motion, covering the mile and a quarter and 159 and four. It was her fifth straight victory to open the 2016 campaign. She is now eight and oh lifetime on the turf. The win at Belmont was a win and you're in for this year's Breeders' Cup Philly and Merit Turf. Cassiqui with Robbie Alvarado aboard won the 81st running of the Arlington Handicap at Arlington, punching his ticket in the next month's Arlington Million. The six-year-old son of lasting approval took command in the stretch and hung on for a length and a quarter win. Right there, too, at the point of attack. Five force, five from the front, Peaches wide. Five green stars, our great adventure. We trail back to Pike General Party. Three quarters went in woman at 14 and two for Sessons. Kasekwe has taken the lead. Roman approval toward the inside, looking to stay on his go around. Messi on the outside. Well, inside the final half, along with Robbie Alvarado, it's Kasekwe. And Kasekwe wins the Arlington handicap for Roman approval. Social media blew up recently when Pakistan star made quite the debut at Sha Tin Racecourse in Hong Kong. The German bread was dead last the entire way, way off the pace, but check out this finish. Bear chum and call me handsome. Great titanic struggle. Look at Pakistan star right out in the middle of the track from last to first. What a win this. Pakistan star has blown them away. Coming up, we're going to take a look at an exciting new racing syndicate that's creating quite a buzz. Our weekly handicapping segment and the jockey joust. But first, a look at the trainer standings. You can also catch the radio version of Talking Horses on G987 World Beat Sports. They're off! Catch the thrill and bet anywhere, anytime with HPI Bet. Use HPIBet.com on your phone, tablet, or PC to bet when you just can't be there. Join HPI Bet for free today. Stream live racing from over 150 tracks around the world. Bet with ease anywhere, anytime. It's safe and secure. Plus, receive personalized alerts, rewards, and more. Become a member, join for free today, and get up to $250. Plus, your first bet is on us. Simply go to HPIBet.com and sign up now. Welcome back to Talking Horses. It's a brand new syndicate that allows just about anybody to get involved in the racing game. For years, Joe, horse racing was known as the sport of kings, but obviously that's changed from years back now. The beauty of our game, we have men and women, both equine and human, battling on the same playing surface day in and day out. And you know, speaking of the sport of queens, the beauty of this thing, you don't have to have a lot of money to be a part of it. With more on this brand new venture, let's check in with Talking Horses reporter, Maddie Joe Tilly. Being a racehorse owner is easier than ever. There are groups out there, or syndicates, where you can buy a share in a racehorse. Horse racing is a very expensive sport. And when you do the share options in a racing syndicate, it allows just somebody that is in love of horses an opportunity to be involved in a sport where many could not. Hence the sport of kings, because it's very costly. Well, when we were naming it, we decided on the sport of queens with the theory that where it's unattainable for most, we would to make it attainable for anyone. It's almost like a, um, a club, um, a social club, where people are anxious to meet each other. Um, so the 200 shares, we're almost there. We have 33 left to go. So um, the numbers that I put together with the small investment that each person puts in, I need 200 shares to make it work where we do not charge anyone any bills. There's no surprises, that's a flat fee and that's, that's it. 
Now, have you found a horse already? We got a two-year-old that was in a two-year-old in training sale in Maryland. And um, I've had her for about uh, a month and a half now. And she's progressing very well and she's beautiful, beautiful horse. I'm um, based out of Fort Erie, I'm training there. Uh, but of course we have intentions of running here at Woodbine. Um, but yeah, she's there and people uh, were able to name her. We had a contest and all the members um, voted on the particular name that we got for her. We have a filly, her name is Queen's Honor. We purchased a two-year-old in training and our thought pattern on that, we wanted to get a filly or a colt that was already started its training. Um, a lot of times having patience in this sport is something you have to have, but at least we wanted to get an athlete that was already on its way towards the races. Um, Francine and I really wanted to have people see the process, but also not have to wait, say, two years if we bought a you know, yearling or, or a weanling. So this is a process where they can see its training. Uh, she has already breezed, so we have hopes that she will be you know, moving forward towards the race this year, and that's our goals. How did you even hear about Sport of Queen's Racing? Well, John read it in the paper, and he ripped it out and said, oh, you have to read this. I really want to buy one of these shares. And I said, oh, yeah, no, that's really good, because it's not a lot of money and looks like a lot of fun, and we really enjoyed it. And we've even got our son has a share as well, so we think we own half an ear. So I know somebody else said they own part of the nose. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's great, great fun. How does it feel to now be a, a racehorse owner? Fabulous, fabulous. Well, I, I want to see it running in a race. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, no, we're, we're really happy. And if it wins, will you be in the winner's circle? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Are a lot of people just buying one share? And um, also, how much is it? For $430, you have a whole year of owning a horse, the bills are paid, there is absolutely no cash calls or investment calls, so you are clear. The next calendar year, there will be a $200 investment that is due for your operation cost again. But that is it, that is absolutely it. So you can either buy one share, you can buy 10 shares. Now, do you see any risks with being part of a syndicate at all for someone? Um, I don't think there are any, uh, you know, there's always a risk that your horse will not make it to the races. That's understandable. Um, but as far as any risks inherent to strict, strictly to syndicates, I would say no. Do you know of any other syndicates in Canada right now that are happening? Uh, or? Yes, there's one at, uh, it's called the Hastings Racing Club, I think, out in Vancouver. And they've had tremendous success. And they have quite a large group, I think 150 people possibly. Um, they claim the horse. Um, I think they've done several now and they've had really, really good response and they do it uh, with the racetrack itself. Um, there are many other syndicates here, but on a much smaller scale and bigger investment. Well, if anybody ever really wants that thrill of, you know, being involved in racing and actually being in the winter circle and cheering on your own horse, I think that's what, what we're in here for, you know, it's a thrill. Well, there you have it. If you've ever dreamed about being a horse owner, you can join a syndicate just like Sport of Queens Racing, and it could be you in the winner's circle. For Talking Horses, I'm Maddie Jo Tilly. Yes, and I already know a lot of people who have become involved in that syndicate. When we come back, our Groom of the Week and jousting into the finals, but first, a look at the owner standings. Ontario, the voice of thoroughbred readers, supporting the well-being of the thoroughbred industry, advocating, building for the future with awards, recognition, incentives, supporting the dream from the start to the finish, ensuring it pays to buy, breed, and race in Ontario. Don't miss your opportunity to live the dream. Join us at the Canadian Premier Yearling Sale September the 1st, the Canadian Thoroughbred Horse Society Ontario, cghsont.com. The 
owner, the trainer, or the jockey, but for a few glorious moments, it's your horse. This is Ontario Racing. Welcome back. Now it's time for our weekly handicapping segment. Jason, I'm on a little roll here. A bit. You're good to go, Joe. I mean, that's back-to-back, -back, so, you know, like, when we play golf, uh, you have the honors. All right, going to go for the hat trick now. Let Three on, wins in a row. Okay. okay, we're going to go five and a half furlongs in clockwise racing today. And I'm going to take the one horse, Red Fever, for two reasons. Red Fever, first of all, that post is very important in those clockwise good point, races, good point. having the rail. And this horse on the turf in seven previous races has two wins and a third. So we're going to go with, the, with Red Fever, the one horse. Coming off a win at Fort Erie, so he's in good form. You know what? I'm going to just throw everything out the window. And I'm going to take a shot with Go Greeley. I mean, here's a horse that's going to start from way outside, post number seven on the gate. So that's obviously not a good thing. Uh, the horse hasn't won in 2015 or yet this year, but just the one start in 2016. And hey, to top it all off, this horse has never raced on the grass, so he's inexperienced, but I know he likes to eat the stuff, uh, so hopefully he can run on the stuff. So, you know what? Taking a shot with Go Greeley, the son of Horse Greeley, coming off a nice second place effort, Patrick Husbands for John Ross. I'm gonna try and buck the trend with a horse that, you know what, may just light up the tote board. All right, good luck to everybody. And now it's time for our Groom of the Week. Jason, who are you looking at? Well, Joe, you know, a lot of the time I get here inside the walking ring and I'm absolutely stumped. Just don't know what to select, who to select for Groom of the Week, but not this time around. It was an absolute slam dunk Hampstead Heat. Talk about a really good looking great son of Macho Uno. Congratulations to Marlon Ramsey because this seven year old has yet to race this year, but man oh man, he came over looking like, hey, I've been here before and I'm ready to get this done. All pumped up and on the muscle. And apparently he's getting better with age, like a fine wine. Marlon Ramsey, employed by Danny Vela, coupled with Hampstead Heath, this week's choice for Groom of the Week. And all the names for our Groom of the Week winners will get thrown into a hat at the end of the season and we'll make a draw for a dinner for four at Wendell Clark's Classic Grill and Bar. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to blow your mind. It is that world-famous, <laughs> life-altering segment Jockey Joe's. Jason, who are we looking at? Bit of a twist this week, Joe, because Amy OJ was supposed to take on her fellow female rival in Emma Wilson, but Amy's at Fort Erie, so we've called an audible. Sonny Singh, he's back in the game, so Sonny Singh will take on Emma Jane Wilson. All right, let's see what happened. Jockey Joust is brought to you by the Ontario Lottery and Gaming Corporation. All right, so here we are inside the jocks room. These two battling for the right to take on Jerry Olgin in the final. Your category, track announcers. All right, let's do this. Question number one, which race caller coined the phrase and down the stretch they come? Was it A, Daryl Wells, B, Dan Loisel, or C, Dave Johnson? Down the stretch they come. Daryl Wells, Dan Loisel, Dave Johnson. A, B, or C? Let's go, Sonny. You're thinking about this too long. Let's go. Emma says A, Daryl Wells. Sonny says B, Dan Loisel. It's C, Dave Johnson. No damage, zero, zero. Question number two. Name the announcer who was behind the mic at Belmont calling American Farrell's Triple Crown winning moment. Was it A, Trevor Denman, B, Larry Colmus, or C, John Dooley? A, Trevor Denman, no, it is B, Larry Colmus, one nothing, Emma Wilson. Okay, Sonny, you gotta get this one to stay in it. Question number three, at which racetrack did Tom Durkin call his final race? At what racetrack did Tom Durkin his final race? Was it A, Saratoga, B, Belmont, or C, Aqueduct? A, B, or C? Final race call for Tom Durkin took place at B, Belmont, no, it is A, Saratoga, I'm so there. Emma Wilson, oh, you were there. <laughs> Emma Wilson, you are on to the finals. Congratulations. Okay, Good stuff. Right. Well, congratulations to Emma. She's off to the final. And she's on a roll, eh? She's looking now for an unprecedented second title in terms of the Jockey Joes. She will battle Jerry Olge next week. For a $100 gift card. That's right. Wendell Clark's mm -hmm. Classic Grill and Bar. Well, that does it for this week's show. For Jason and all of us here at Talking Horses, I'm Joe Tilly. We'll see you at the track. Yeah.